Welcome to Music and May's YouTube channel. It's a brand new year and a brand new world we live in. I'm so excited that we were able to launch our 14th anniversary season last week, beginning with a program for youth at the local juvenile hall. And thanks to sponsors, Arts Council Santa Cruz County, Sunrise Rotary, and many generous individuals were able to continue these programs through the end of May. Enjoy these highlights from last week's program. As Kristen said, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a violinist who grew up in Santa Cruz. I started music in May in 2008, and it's an annual festival of chamber music. What is chamber music? For those of you who don't know, it's basically a small group of classical musicians playing together, or you can think of it as a band of classical musicians. Unfortunately, we can't be there in person with you to perform our chamber music. And instead of live chamber music, for the next few months, every two weeks, Wednesday at this time, I will introduce you to musician friends of mine from all over the U.S. This week, we have violinist Juan Jaramillo. Juan lives the lifestyle that is common to performing musicians. Prior to the pandemic, he was very busy traveling city to city, performing on many different stages. Juan plays chamber music, but mostly he works in orchestras. And you can see here a picture of one orchestra. And basically that's instead of a band of, of chamber musicians, it's a large group of classical musicians. As you can see there, the man with the baton in his hand, that indicates when to begin, how loud or soft to play, how quickly to play. He's our leader in the orchestra. Juan lives in Pittsburgh and he's performed in classical groups in Florida, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Washington, DC, Oregon, Iowa, and many more, including at this baseball stadium. And I've worked with Juan in several groups. We've been on roller coaster projects, but over the last 10 plus years, he truly has become a most treasured friend. Not only is he a great musical colleague, he also loves generously entertaining. He's a great cook, especially as Venezuelan arepas. So let's give Juan a warm welcome with some applause. Thank you. It's a pleasure oh. to be here. Thanks, Juan. So I wanted to ask you to maybe start off just where are you in the world right now and how has your life looked lately during the pandemic? Well, I'm currently in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania 
in my room right now. And previous to the pandemic, I actually, I was playing in Florida. I was playing opera and symphonic music. And then when the pandemic hit uh, mid-March last year, I traveled back to Pittsburgh. And as many of us, we, we have been dealing with this pandemic in one way or another. And I was kind of encouraged and sort of forced to start a second career for now. So I'm, I'm working for New York Life right now, uh, waiting for the pandemic to ease and to get back on the stage. I've been doing a lot of different little projects online. I've been starting to play live certain, certain things that are happening already uh, around Pittsburgh and uh, things of this sort reaching out to people uh, all across the country and the world uh, via Zoom. Well, Juan, you're definitely one of the hardest workers I know. I am inspired when I just think of your journey. I, you didn't grow up in the U.S., so maybe you could speak a little bit to that, but also perhaps share some of your very first musical memories. As you mentioned, I'm not from the United States. Uh, you can tell by my accent also. I'm originally from Venezuela, uh, South America, and I came to the States in 96. The first musical memory that is imprinted in my mind is my parents playing music at the house through the radio or the stereo. Also my mom playing piano. She grew up as a musician, but she had to stop her music education because she ended up going to study pharmacy. One of the greatest things that I think that I've been able to enjoy has been going to school with my mom because by the time that I started my music education my mom wanted to come back to music to finish the classes that she couldn't finish because she was at pharmacy school. By the time that I got to the classes that she couldn't finish she joined me at the music school and we went to classes together so that was that was really cool. As far as my experience with El Sistema, it was an amazing opportunity that not only gave me music education, but social exposure to people that I don't think that I would have met if it wasn't for El Sistema or, or music. And the idea of the program is that the government supports financially this institution to, in order to offer free classes and instruments to people that are not able to afford that. And I was surrounded by people that didn't have a lot of money, but had a great passion and dedication to music. La raíz para mí del problema social está en la exclusión. Entonces nosotros tenemos que luchar por incluir el mayor número, todos si es posible incluirlo en este mundo bello, ¿verdad? Que es nuestro mundo de la música, de la orquesta, del canto, ¿verdad? De, del arte. gentleman that you heard in that video, he was the founder and he started this in 1975. Juan was one of the first children to grow up studying in El Sistema and to me it's just so inspiring and it's also the best representation of the power of music to bring community and all people of all backgrounds together. Something that Juan and I are so passionate about. I feel very thankful because El Sistema it gave me the opportunity to learn how to play in orchestra, learn how to play violin, and eventually to come to the States. So I won a scholarship in 95 to be able to come to the States to continue with my music education. So I came to Duquesne in Pittsburgh, and I, at that point I didn't know how to speak English. So I was very fortunate that that 
scholarship cover the ESL program. So the first year, year and a half was very tough because of learning English and keeping up with my music. After like six, seven months being immersed in the culture, constantly exposed to English classes and obviously playing violin and relating to people around me, language became much easier. El Sistema was the one that really kind of opened the door for me and the opportunity to be able to come to the States. One of the coolest things that I had done recently was being able to play with a, a rock band, Da Who, that, that happened last year when they came to Pittsburgh and I was part of the, the orchestra. So it has been an amazing experience to be able to be a musician and be part of all these different things in my life. We wanted to conclude this session with one more piece of music from Venezuela. And this one is a little more active than the one that I played before. And this comes from the traditional dance called the Joropo, which means party. And in Venezuela, uh, we have a portion of the, the country that is plains and very dry and, and, and hot. And that's where we have our own version of the cowboys very similar to the, the cowboys that we have here and the gaucho, which is in Argentina. So we have all these different variations. The name of the tune is Apure en un viaje. Thank you. Gracias.